great theme my knees and the great Gatsby chapter 5 section 4 before I could answer Daisy came out of the house and two rows of brass buttons on her dress gleamed in the sunlight that huge place there she cried pointing do you like it I love it but I don't see how you live there all alone I keep it always full of interesting people night and day people who do interesting things celebrated people instead of taking the shortcut along the sound we went down the road and entered by the big postern with enchanting murmurs Daisy admired this aspect or that of the feudal silhouette against the sky admired the gardens the sparkling odor of jonquils and the frothy odor of hawthorn and plum blossoms and the pale gold odor of kiss me at the gate it was strange to reach the marble steps and find no stir of bright dresses in and out the door and hear no sound but the bird voices in the trees and inside as we wandered through marie antoinette music rooms and restoration salons I felt that there were guests concealed behind every couch and table, under orders to be breathlessly silent until we had passed through. As Gadsby closed the door of the Merton College Library, I could have sworn I heard the owl-eyed man break into ghostly laughter. We went upstairs through period bedrooms swathed in rose and lavender silk and vivid with new flowers, through dressing rooms and pool rooms and bathrooms with sunken baths intruding into one chamber where a disheveled man in pajamas was doing liver exercises on the floor it was mr clipspringer the boarder i had seen him wandering hungrily about the beach that morning finally we came to gatsby's own apartment a bedroom and a bath and an atom study where we sat down and drank a glass of some chartreuse he took from a cupboard in the wall. He hadn't once ceased looking at Daisy, and I think he revalued everything in his house according to the measure of response it drew from her well-loved eyes. Sometimes, too, he stared around at his possessions in a dazed way, as though in her actual and astounding presence none of it was any longer real. Once, he nearly toppled down a flight of stairs. His bedroom was the simplest room of all, except where the dresser was garnished with a toilet set of pure, dull gold. Daisy took the brush with delight and smoothed her hair, whereupon Gadsby sat down and shaded his eyes and began to laugh. <laughs> it's the funniest thing, old sport, he said hilariously. I, I can't <laughs> when I try to. He had passed visibly through two states and was entering upon a third. After his embarrassment and his unreasoning joy, he was consumed with wonder at her presence. He had been full of the idea so long, dreamed it right through to the end, waited with his teeth set, so to speak, at an inconceivable pitch of intensity. <coughs> now, in the reaction, he was running down like an overwound clock. Recovering himself in a minute, he opened for us two hulking patent cabinets, which held his masked suits and dressing gowns and ties and his shirts, piled like bricks in stacks a dozen high. I've got a man in England who buys me clothes. He sends over a selection of things at the beginning of each season, spring and fall. He took out a pile of shirts and began throwing them one by one before us, shirts of sheer linen and thick silk and fine flannel, which lost their folds as they fell and covered the table in many colored disarray. While we admired, he brought more and the soft, rich heap mounted higher, shirts with stripes and scrolls and plaids and coral and apple green and lavender and faint orange with monograms of indian blue suddenly with a strange sound daisy bent her head into the shirts and began to cry stormily they're such beautiful shirts she sobbed her 
voice muffled in the thick folds. It makes me sad because I've never seen such such beautiful shirts before. After the house, we were to see the grounds and the swimming pool and the hydroplane and the midsummer flowers, but outside Gatsby's window it began to rain again. So we stood in a row looking at the corrugated surface of the sound. If it wasn't for the mist, we could see your home across the bay, said Gatsby. You always have a green light that burns all night at the end of your dock. Daisy put her arm through his abruptly, but he seemed absorbed in what he had just said. Possibly it had occurred to him that the colossal significance of that light had now vanished forever. Compared to the great distance that had separated him from Daisy, it had seemed very near to her, almost touching her. It had seemed as close as a star to the moon. And now it was again a green light on a dock. His count of enchanted objects had diminished by one.